Let's learn about optic neuritis. So this is an inflammatory demyelinating disease affecting the optic nerve. And it affects about 50% of patients with multiple sclerosis and is highly associated with this disease. In about 15 to 20% of patients with multiple sclerosis, it is the presenting uh, symptom. So it happens more commonly away from the equator and also happens more commonly in women. And in children, you can commonly see bilateral optic neuritis. So the typical presentation, you'll see a woman in her 20s to 40s and she will have monocular vision loss that develops over the span of hours to days and peaks by two weeks. If the vision loss is still progressively getting worse after two weeks, then consider an alternate diagnosis. Uh, typically, the vision loss can be central vision loss, such as a central scotoma. However, you can have visual loss of any visual field uh, as well. So the eye pain usually exists in about 90% of patients as well, and that's worsened with movement. There can also be loss of color vision, especially the color red. A relative afferent pupillary defect always occurs, and we'll talk about what that is. And if it affects the anterior optic nerve, then sometimes the optic disc can be swollen as well. So for an afferent pupillary defect, we can illustrate this with the swinging flashlight test. So when the flashlight is swung onto a normal eye, the optic nerve transmits the signals bilaterally to both oculomotor nerves, which will constrict the eyes. So if you have a normal optic nerve, swinging a flashlight into that eye will cause both eyes to constrict. However, if the optic nerve is has a lesion, such as optic neuritis, then the light is not transmitted and neither eye will constrict. So for the evaluation, an ophthalmologic exam is very important, including fundoscopy, because this can help either diagnose other causes of monocular vision loss or optic neuritis. And for the diagnosis, for about 95% of patients, they will have an abnormality on their optic nerve on the MRI brain and orbits with contrast, and it'll demonstrate optic nerve inflammation. The MRI brain can also reveal typical multiple sclerosis lesions if they have multiple sclerosis. A lumbar puncture can be done if other causes are suspected, however, for a classic Optic neuritis, it does not always have to be done. Some reasons why you might do a lumbar puncture might include bilateral vision loss, or if it appears in a young age, or if there are infectious symptoms. And for anyone with optic neuritis, you'll want to evaluate them to see if they have multiple sclerosis. And if not, especially if it's recurrent disease, you'll want to test them for neuromyelitis optica with the aquaporin-4 antibody and, and anti-MOG disease as well. So what are the imaging findings? So on the MRI, you can see on a T1 with contrast that the optic nerve here contrast enhances on the coronal view. And then here, You'll also see enhancement on the axial view. So the treatment is IV steroids, specifically methylprednisolone, for three days, followed by an oral taper. The advantage of the IV formulation over oral steroids is that it can accelerate the initial visual recovery, although there's no difference in long-term visual recovery. It does, however, reduce the risk of recurrent optic neuritis and the conversion to multiple sclerosis.
Disease-modifying therapy can be started if the brain MRI suggests multiple sclerosis lesions or if the CSF has illegal clonal bands. So basically, if they have a high-risk clinically isolated syndrome or if they have a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. So for prognosis, the vision begins to improve within a few weeks, even without treatment. However, there are some risk factors for poor visual recovery, such as severe vision loss at one month, longer optic nerve lesions on the MRI, African American race, as well as aquaporin-4 antibodies. So 30% of patients that are, that are diagnosed with optic neuritis will have a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis within five years of their first episode. There's also a pretty big risk of recurrence. About 35% of patients with optic neuritis will have recurrence by 10 years. And there are some persistent defects as well, such as about 25% of patients will have a relative afferent pupillary defect. And the optic atrophy will usually persist as well.